Hey folks, Schneider here. I just got off of uh, Newsmax, love being on Newsmax. Uh, but you know, on uh, shows like that, there's never really time to talk very much. So I'm going to explain a little bit more fully what, uh, what we're talking about on Newsmax. Of course, we're discussing the, um, the shooting of the cinematographer and the director uh, on the movie out in, um, in New Mexico. So what I was saying on Newsmax was that there's really, there's no way for anyone who knows anything about firearms to accidentally put a live round into a weapon where a blank is supposed to be. Uh, it, and what I said on there would be like trying to uh, be like accidentally putting a ceiling tile or a bathroom tile into a toaster. Yes, it's a square, but it's an entirely different thing. You'd have to know nothing about ceiling tiles. You'd have to know nothing about toasters in order to be able to make that mistake. So um, the question is for me, who's been on many sets, uh, number one, who loaded the gun? So that is a, is a very important question. Now I just heard as we were leaving the, uh, leaving the show that they had they had cleared the guns before lunch and then put, the, uh, uh, put them down and then had lunch and then come back. Well, that doesn't really fly because uh, even in the, here, look, in this little, this little thing, here's a gun. Saw that little flame, right? The little flame come out. Well, that was a real gun, but there were no bullets anywhere near it. There were no bullets on the set. There were no bullets in Mindy's pocket. There were no bullets in my pocket. There were no bullets. Because the number one rule is if you are going to have actual firearms on the set, there are no bullets anywhere. Um, kind of like, uh, I don't know if this law is still in effect, but if you have a weapon in your car I believe the bullets are supposed to be locked up, not just in the glove box, but locked up in the glove box so that you can't get to them. That used to be the law, I believe. I'm not sure if it is anymore. But, so, who loaded the gun? And if they look, here's the protocol. If they put blanks in a gun before lunch, did a couple of test rounds, and then went to lunch and came back, then that gun should, you start from number one, or you start from zero, that gun should have been cleared and gone through once again by the armorer, by the prop man or woman, then by the, everyone who touches that gun, up to and including the actor, when, when, uh, here, when, when we did this, Okay, that's a little 22 that fires five shots. Even though you could look at it and see that that gun was empty, which everyone who touches it is required, not supposed to do, required to do. Everyone who touched that weapon on our set is required. Person who hands it off says, look, there's no bullets in it. Person that takes it says, I see that there are no bullets in it. This is, this is important, this verbal, this uh, oral communication. I see that there are no bullets in it. Then, if it shoots five times, you will dry fire it five times to make triple sure that there is nothing in it that could possibly uh, cause an accident, okay? Every time. Um, now, in Westerns, many times in Westerns, they will be using antique guns. Right? They'll be using a period gun, not a Dakota. They'll be actually using a real Colt because people are looking at them very close. If I'm pointing a gun like this, if I'm pointing a gun like this, it's different. If I'm pointing a gun like that, especially in a period piece, people want to be able to see that that is a real Dragoon or that is a real single action Colt. That is a real period piece. So in that event, they will occasionally put dummy rounds in a gun. 
Now, I, I haven't been on this set, and I don't know. I'm just telling you the, the scenarios as far as from my perspective. They'll put dummy rounds in. Now, a dummy round is a bullet. Most of the guns we're talking is probably a 45. Uh, if, if, if that was a 45 in that gun, that is a tremendously powerful, powerful bullet. So they'll put a dummy round in, which is the casing, and it is the lead. However, there's nothing inside. There's no, uh, there's no gunpowder inside. You would shake that. And if you are an armorer and you had dummy rounds, you would never, there is no world in which you would keep your dummy rounds and your live rounds in the same box. Doesn't exist. Even if you did, which would be cause for firing you immediately on the spot, you would take that bullet out, shake it to hear if there was any gunpowder in it. Then you would look on the back of a bullet. There's a, where's your belt? Is your belt right here? Hold, please. Thank you, baby. So this is, so on the back of a bullet, this is the cap. So when the, isn't that cool? When the, uh, when you pull the trigger, there's a little point on the end of the trigger or sometimes inside, but on a Colt, there's a little point on the end of the trigger. It will hit this dead center. That's a little tiny explosion, but it blows fire into the chamber of the bullet. So boom, boom, it explodes and ignites the gunpowder that's over here, which then causes a tremendous amount of pressure, which then pushes the lead, the projectile, out of the end of the bullet, then out of the end of the gun. So if it's a blank, still has this, has less gunpowder because there are, there are full loads, half loads, and quarter loads, okay? And everyone on the set would know what that was because the first AD would say, we're gonna shoot blanks, we're going into blanks, gun is hot, it is a quarter load, but treat it like a bullet. Very important. Treat it like a bullet. So then a little piece of uh, paper, wadding, cardboard, would come out of the end, and it would be on fire. Uh, I know because I got hit on Dukes with, with one in the arm from about 20 feet from a 45 full load. Uh, it burned. It didn't. It didn't hurt. It burned. Um, so I hope you can you can see the big question here is is how in the world did a live round get put into a real gun? It's not a prop gun. Prop. You know, it is true that if I pick up my if I pick up this pen, it becomes a prop. It's it's my prop. But that's they only say that because this then becomes the responsibility of the prop department. So if the actor puts it down, the prop department should know where it is. They should go pick it up and be ready to give it back to the actor later because actors are, are uh, uh, historically irresponsible with their props. However, in a, in a Western, you usually, uh, you, would, you would keep your empty weapon prop on you. Anytime you get into a situation where a weapon is actually going to be fired, a blank is going to be fired, which brings us to another uh, area here. Anytime you do that, the, the weapon is handed back over to either the prop master or the armorer. Now, when you are doing a movie that has a lot of guns in it, a lot of gunfire in it, then most of, most of those times, especially on a $6 million movie, uh, which is what I understand the budget was on this. You will uh, you'll have an armorer, which is a weapons expert, usually someone uh, from the military, oftentimes a, 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 a SEAL. I mean, a very high level um, gun expert, weapons expert. And in those cases, the guns will be handed. Uh, I believe in the times that I've done it, the gun comes from the armorer to the actor in full view of the first AD. There's no reason in that world 
for the uh, for the first AD to, to take the weapon and and hand it over. Um, and that's also that. Remember, I said when we did this, even though we knew the gun was empty and there was no intent to shoot, have fire come out of it, because I was going to do that later. Uh, we went through all the safety precautions anyway, every time. If you put a weapon down on the set, if I was standing here, sitting here talking to you, and this was a gun, and I said, I'm going to run, before we do the shot, I'm going to run to the restroom, and I put that down. When I come back, we start at zero. We start at, hey, everybody, this is a firearm, and it is empty. Open it, show everybody that it's empty. In fact, to make double sure, the armorer would go bang, 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 click, 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 and then hand it to me and say, weapon is empty. I would look at it and say, yes, the weapon is empty. And then I would go bang, 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 click, 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 click. So there is a series, there is a protocol that is innate now to people who've done this more than one time. And there's a reason for it, so that what happened this last weekend couldn't possibly happen. Um, it is, it is tragic, yes, but this needs to be investigated uh, criminally, I believe, um, because it's it's either criminal negligence or or worse. Now, here's a terrible scenario. People who don't know anything about guns, and those are usually the ones who are, are trying to get rid of the Second Amendment because they're unaware of them. I'm not going to speak against uh, snowboarding because I don't snowboard. I'm not going to speak against something that I have no knowledge of whatsoever. However, it seems like there are many people uh, who feel like they should, and Alec is one of them blows my mind. So you would have to be a complete and total novice with regard to firearms in order to put a bullet in a real gun on a set, which then begs the question, if you are a total novice, where did you get a real bullet anyway? People who are against guns usually don't have bullets in their pockets. So where did the bullet come from and who put it in the gun? These are two very important questions. And then remember, from the reports I've heard, it was the first AD that handed the gun to Alec and said, gun is cold. Which, by the way, means there's not even a blank in it. Gun is cold means the gun is empty, incapable of being fired in any regard. So why didn't, so who, who loaded the gun and then handed the gun to the first AD and must have said gun is cold because, because unless this was this first AD's first job, which is not, you, you have to work your way up through the ranks. You don't get to be a first AD because you're somebody's cousin. It doesn't work that way. So this person knew the rules. Why didn't this person look at the gun, check it, dry fire it? And then they handed it to Alec, where, as you now know, they should have said, they did say gun is cold, but they didn't say, they didn't prove it. You have to prove it. You have to show it. So if they showed the gun to Alec and said, gun is, gun is cold, and done it the proper way, then, then they would have shown him the chambers of the gun, gun is cold, fired it, and handed it over, at which case they would have said here, Alec would have looked at it and said, yes, the gun is cold, close the chamber, or if it's a 45, put the little clip down, not clip, the little spring-loaded thing that keeps the bullets from falling out, dry-fired it, and only then would they have told the, the first AD, 
would have said to the director, we're ready, sir. Only then. Okay. So I hope this helps you, you put yourself there and, and ask some legitimate questions. At some other time, we'll get into why was the gun aimed at the cinematographer and the director? Why was that? Because that's also strange. Uh, that quickly, uh, occasionally when we are rehearsing, uh, like if the shot, if the shot is this, right? Like that. I will be on the other side of the camera, going, finding, looking at the viewfinder, talking to the uh, talking to the uh, camera operator, and saying, "Okay, right here. I want you to aim it. Okay, aim, aim, aim. Okay, right there is the center of frame. See how it's the center of frame? And I want to see the fire come out of the end of the gun. Okay, in this scenario, that gun is going to shoot uh, a blank in the old days, but now it's not going to shoot a blank. It's just going to be like." like that. It's going to be CGI and it looks exactly the same and I have full control over the size of the fire that comes out and how much smoke and everything. I like having full control of something and having a safe set. I like that. So right there now I would be over there showing the person where to aim the gun. Okay. But then when we actually did it There'd be what we call a C-stand, which is a big, a big stand with a piece of tape on it. Because there's, there's, you would, you just would not take that risk. Uh, you just wouldn't. There's not a world in which I've worked, and I've worked in, in movies and television for the last 43 years, uh, and 10 years of stage before that. There's not a world where it's okay or even likely this is what makes no sense to me that if i'm aiming a gun you would be you'd be looking down the barrel of that gun off camera i don't understand that i'd like to see the shot um because i'd like to see if alec was far away and shooting you know is it like butch and sundance bang 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 or was it this shot i'm i'm thinking it was probably this shot but i'm uh, that's total speculation uh, because that's the only world in which somebody says, uh, we can see that the gun is not loaded, put dummy bullets in, and then an accident occurs because some moron put live rounds into the same box as the dummy rounds, and then someone who didn't know any better didn't check, and then handed a gun to someone who apparently still didn't know any better because they didn't check to see if it was actually a dummy round, and by the way, when you look in there, I know I'm rambling, when you look in the back of a gun, the way you tell whether it's a dummy round or not is to see if that, ha if that has a dent in it, that means it has been fired and cannot be fired again. You can't fire these things twice, or sometimes that'll be just not be there, okay? So there's a whole lot that had to go wrong in order for this to be uh, uh, a, a forgivable, which I don't think it is, accident. So many things had to go wrong in succession in several different departments, all of whom should have been extensively trained in gun safety. Uh, I am in favor of guns. Obviously, we use them occasionally on the set, but we follow the protocol, uh, and you must, or terrible things can happen. But I ask you again, who loaded the gun? That's my question. This was very long. I apologize for that. Uh, you guys and girls, take care. I will see you down the road. Bye.